Hey everybody, it's Jason Ellis, the CEO of Father Grind. Are you old and feeling about feeling like it's time to give up on your life because you're too old to skateboard? Well, guess what? That's a lie. Stop being a pansy and get up and go. Get the Father Grind video and learn how to shred because you're never too old to skate. I'm 52 and I'm way better than all of you. But I did it the dumb way and I'm here to teach you the safe way. We're selling pads, we've got shoes, we got grip tape, we got trucks, riser pads, wheels, bearings, bolts, a skate key. I'm going to teach you how to set up one of these bad boys. The Father Grind Jason Ellis special right here, built by Paul Schmidt. And if you want to learn to skate like Ian Fidance, you can skate. That guy is useless, and now he is a shred machine. Do you think you're useless? Do you think you're old? It's a lie. They've been telling you lies. The government is lying to you. Listen to Jason Ellis. These are the facts. You can shred. Get your friend... Get another old dude. Get an old girl. Don't call her that. But you guys can go skate together and you'll have big smiles on your face like your children and Santa's here. Look, everybody, it's Santa. And he shaved his head and got a wolf tattooed on his head. And he's bringing gifts in the shape of skateboarding. Father Grind, get it. It's out June 2024. Make sure you get it. Make sure you live your life to the fullest. Don't die old and pissed. Die Old but young in your soul with a big dumb smile on your face. Fathergrind.com. I just did. I do Boston. If I don't do local radio, it's my hometown. I do local radio, sell out. Shoot. I did a phoner for a club a couple weeks ago, and the guy's talking to me. Sound, the guy's name was Jordan something, and it sounded like a black dude on the phone. Yeah. And at one point, he goes to me, he's talking to me on the phone, and he's like, a, Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, I bet you. He goes, what do you listen to uh, before you go on stage? A little bit of country. You seem like a guy listening to a little bit of country before you go on stage. And I was like, no. I said, country's not really my thing. And he was just saying it in a way that I thought, I was taking it as it was a black dude going like, you're probably a white boy listening to some country yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, you know, you don't put a little Morgan Wallen before. And I think he was just kind of like, just being like corny with me. And I was like, no, nah, country, I mean, some country, but it's not really my thing before I go on a show. And he's like, all right, and then we kind of wrapped up the talk, and he goes, "Well, anyway, we'll be right back, everybody. This is today's country hits." Oh no! I was like, <laughs> oh, oh shit! <laughs> I was like, "Oh, you're trying to?" Okay. He was trying to bro down. <laughs> oh, yeah, he was trying to bro down. I'm like, I'm like, country? No, you guys are a bunch of hillbilly idiots. <laughs> Man. Oh. <laughs> Close your eyes. It's a dragon. <laughs> it's a fog machine in a room this small is hilarious. It really did yeah. sound like a dragon. See? <laughs> you finally got somebody. Somebody finally. You're not a fan of Game of Thrones? It's just I'm a, a total fan. And nobody gets it, but that is spot on. That's yeah. probably all the Foley effects were. That's were one tiny little Japanese chick with a fan. I'm semi ashamed. I am semi ashamed of how much that you know I me. enjoy I, I've heard that. That that I <laughs> that I own and enjoy a nice flip fan. Dude, it I makes me happy. I, <laughs> Okay, so I don't know how to use it, and then Ian Fidance was on the show yesterday, and he did that, and I was like, oh, teach me that, and now I know how to do that, and now that thing is way cooler than it originally was. Big Jay right? and Bobby Kelly, welcome to the show, Thank now you. I can see you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, put the mic in your face, Jay. I Sorry. Yeah. I used to, uh, I watched for a while, Netflix had, not the main show, but the after show for one of the, RuPaul's Drag Race, or one yeah. of them. And the guy's name was Johnny something. He would just... Johnny Gay? 
Johnny sucks. No. Johnny homo. Johnny Felch. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Johnny Felch. Yeah, <laughs> love that those guy. Were, I like those were all real people, and you just got one of them. And goes, oh yeah, not John, not Johnny, not Johnny Balls. Um, but he would do a. I used to love his intro because he would just. Uh, he would he would sexually harass for sure the male dancers on the show, and it's just great. Nice no, first try. First try. Dude, first it's natural. Dude, dudes won't get upset about stuff. I guess so he would grab their wieners. Shit, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and do all kinds of stuff. Can I see it for a second? You should have ended it with the one shot. I know. But he goes, uh, he would, the way he would send it up, he would go, this is our show where we talk about the RuPaul's Drag Race, where we spill a little tea and throw a little shame. <laughs> oh, dude. And I love that. What's, that what's the comedian in New York that has it? The host. Big guy. Mayron. Mayron. He goes Big homo. Stay. Big felch. Yeah. Big butt. Big, all big all that. He's all that. Yeah. Right. Mayron felch. Yeah, but he always sweats. <laughs> so when he does it, like sweat will just hit the crowd in the face. Just wet. Bob, you're not getting it even once. There what it is. There you go. Suck it. <laughs> no, but you got to have it so the people see the the fan art. So you got to wow. drop it down. Yeah. You were gay that everybody else. Yeah, oh, that was good. I always wanted to be a geisha. No, nice. my one dream to be a geisha. And yeah. you fluff it good too. <laughs> yeah, you did like a real. I was raised by women until I was 11, so I, I right. maintained a lot of that. Yeah, that always pays off for something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, you know what it is? Now I love Marilyn Manson and musicals. So you find both worlds. <laughs> yeah. Jay's a tea sipper. <laughs> okay. Do you, Jay, do you, you, did your pinky come out when you hold a cup of tea? No. I don't All think right. so. Right. I don't think so. Not instinctually. I like to think if it came out, it was because you were of English descent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I realized it's because you're gay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is pretty much the same thing. Which I painted my nails for the first time. Me too. But right. I only paint two, but the two on the end, because I watched John Wick religiously, mm -hmm. one through four. And in the fourth one, this black guy called the guy with no name, he did it. And I reckon he's cool. The guy with the dog. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good guy. I reckon, and I don't know anything about it, that John Wick 5, because, spoiler alert, Maybe John Wick's dead. Maybe not. He could come back. You never know. But I reckon that black guy is the new John Wick, which means no one's going to watch it, which means it's probably a bad idea and it's not going to happen. Over. It's going to be a black John guy. Wick. More like John Woke. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, John Wilkinson. You need to. You need a fan. <laughs> He's just more like John Woke. <laughs> Man, so I always have to ask you guys when we see you, how is our job treating you? Why do you got to do oh, that? <laughs> well, I try I to pretend say, that they don't have our studio and our money, but they do. That's, you or not? That's Dan and yeah. Jay. That was me. <laughs> yeah, they took it. Oh, we don't have your studio or your money. Trust. <laughs> that makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah, no, they got rid of you guys and hired 73 shows, including us. <laughs> <laughs> I see how that was a better business deal for them. They, they spread that money out throughout 75 other shows. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's good to be here, man. We're happy to see you. But yeah, thanks was, for you, coming. You were saying man. something uh, interesting That's about the, you saw the ever. John the John Wick guy <laughs> had that, and you were like, "It looks cool. I'm going to do it." It's an easier thing to admit as an adult, and I bet if we went through, you can go through everything about your style and the person that inspired you to do it. It's yeah. all kind of stolen stuff. Yeah, I said the scarf in my back pocket. Little Wayne at the 2010 VMA Awards. Yeah, had an Afghan hanging out the back of his pocket. It's I go, one little looks thing. awesome. Yeah, it's and a little piece. I used to say that about skateboarding when I was a little kid. I wanted to be like Christian Osoy, and I wanted to be like Chris Miller, and I wanted to be like Jason Jesse. Then I found out Jason Jesse was racist. I was like, whoops, I don't like that. <laughs> but the other guys, I tried to look like them, and then when I got better and started doing my own tricks, I turned into me. But me is pieces of them i just couldn't do the impression that spot on yeah so but if you are if you are from my era you know certain things that i do where you could be like where'd you get where'd you get that you know because yeah, there was, was a total yeah. there was a total rip off there like that's just how and then i see it now with the guys that were from my era the the new guys stand a certain way like some of my friends and i'm like you were Influenced by Danny Way, like very obvious. Now that you're doing stand up, do you feel yourself having to stop yourself picking up other people? Because that's the hard no. thing when you're starting to. That's the one thing I ads. have noticed from the last, because I used to like listen and watch stand up, but never as a person that was wanted to be one. Right. I just seemed, see that I saw that as that would never be me. I would never have the 
the balls or I just didn't see myself as that kind of a funny guy. Like that's just a whole new kind of thing where I'm like, I, I just wouldn't be able to do it. And then now I notice from watching everybody stand up and, and being friends with some bigger name people that the new guys do certain things. Like I see a lot of Shane Gillis microphone holders yep. now yeah. where I go, oh, so he's really hot right now. So you guys, because it used to be you try to hold, hold like, cause I noticed I hold it like I'm Danzig. You know what I mean? I'm like, what, my lord. And I'm like, oh, nobody in comedy does that. They hold the very, they balance it on the very end with, and they like barely hold it. And I was like, oh, holding it down the end is like a professional comedy way to hold a microphone. And I'm like, I don't really want to be exactly like somebody else, but I definitely don't want to be like, Scott doesn't even know what he's doing. He's holding it like a, he's got it right on the butt. Like he doesn't know what he's doing. So I, dro I did drop my hand a little bit. So there was some kind of influence there. Well, it's all the, it's like you're trying to like feign like casual like I don't know this is even fine I don't really care I don't give a shit about this All right. I think if you hold it like the tighter you hold it like uh, yeah the Shane thing is very popular I now. see, I see that a lot of a people lot. doing that yeah. it was like the, the Chappelle everyone picked up to drop the mic and slap your leg yeah. to let the audience know that it's funny to let, so the audience knows <laughs> it's time to laugh now yeah 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 um, here or is the walking a lot when someone told me you gotta walk a lot and I'm like cause it keeps their your focus on you and I was like I don't think anyone's I think I got that covered I think I just look like somebody that you're like, why is he, what happened to him? Well, Eddie you know, Murphy says, keep walking so gay guys don't look at your ass. He wanted you to look at your ass and hoped you were gay. That was the, well, that's the that's line. My, that's the line in Delirious. He goes, that's what it's, uh, I keep walking around so gay dudes don't be looking at my ass. Yeah, that's why he wore skin tight leather pants. So he wore skin tight yeah. leather pants for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let me get the gayest suit I could possibly get. Yeah. yeah. Even in, at that era, it was still. Right. Oh, it was ridiculous. Yeah. But uh, I, I that didn't stop me from. Wanting one of those, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like enough. wanting to wear one. I mean, Michael Jackson did it first, but he didn't have any meat on his leg, so it didn't really sell. Yeah, it didn't sell. Yeah, no, yeah, he was uh, he, the first black thing he lost was that ass. He was a narrow ass. Yeah, right. It's almost career. like he didn't have one from the get go. Eddie For a Murphy, dancer, a dancer's ass. That thing was narrow. Yeah, Eddie had no shirt too. It was just a leather yeah. jacket. He had a good ass though. Great, I ass. can say that. Fantastic ass. Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, no, I can yes. also say people have good asses. Yeah. I've sure. dabbled. <laughs> You're looking at two flat asses right here. Yeah, I have an awful, awful yeah, ass. That, uh, I mean, look at that. It's just a nightmare ass. No, he did it. He, he looks did the like whole he, thing. Yeah, yeah, that's ridiculous. 19 years old. That's what's most insane about that's that. That's confidence right there. Completely, yeah. Yeah, I respect that. And you know that he has got the history of the story of he got SNL because the other black guy they hired just went off the rails. What was his name? You know, Charlie Barnett? Charlie Barnett, who was He was in a DC guy, Cab. He, he was in a movie called DC Cab. And he, he was locked in, and he went bananas, and they fired him. He used to do uh, comedy in Washington Square. He'd get a five-gallon bucket and just rile people up and then do a show and make Wait, a five-gallon bucket of what? Five-gallon, just empty bucket. For money. For people for to money. throw money into it. Oh, so he would wow. Go, he would do a set, yeah. kill in the park, and then walk around and make all his Dude. money. A after that, he went Wait. back to the park and just started making Wait, money. What's that movie about the radio guy that got into stand up and then he was like on uh, late night and he just like told people that he this is all a scam and and stopped it. Would probably be just fake, right? That wasn't real. I don't know. I'm it was like sure a Philly radio guy and like everybody loved him and then he got into stand up. It was a movie about him. Hmm. This sounds like I'm getting like Good Morning Vietnam meets Network meets Lenny Bruce. It was a black guy. That's none of the three things I just said. Yeah, that's why I said that. Yeah. It was probably fake. The whole thing. Yeah, I never heard of that before. Yeah, but I think when it comes to stand up, I noticed I don't have any influences because I don't idolize anybody and I never did. Like I, I, like I thought Richard Pryor was funny, but I wasn't like, man, I want to grow up and be like him. It just didn't seem like it was feasible at the time. And then, uh, Who's the stoner guy that OD'd? Mitch, Mitch Hedberg. Hedberg. That's the only person that when I was a skateboarder, I had his CD and I played it all the time. Yeah. And that was the only time that I recall, like, if you said, do you like stand-up? I'd be like, Mitch Hedberg is awesome. He's the best. And your style's nothing and if you like, like that And if you were like, who's the second best? I'd be like, uh, uh, Richard Pryor? Because that was the only other one I know. You know, I Mitch Hedberg, actually, his first special that broke him, Yeah, he bombed. They actually put laughter. Oh, yeah. Was it outdoors? I f no, it was indoors. Okay. It was a half-hour hour special, but he, he, he fucking up. ate it. 
Yeah, and, and that uh, was his. Spe- and they used and it. And they put. They just put laugh tracks in. Yeah, and then because people just didn't get it, that's, and then people watched it and got it. That's what was my next question was: when people play that special, yeah. it's funny when people watch the special, right? Yeah. It was just people there didn't get it. They didn't yeah. get it because that makes sense. Because the way he his jokes were, if you weren't in like trying to understand his angle, and you were not open mind enough you know because i'm assuming at the time that no one had ever done it like that they're brilliant but you could be like a dull i don't want to say i don't want to label anybody but i feel like your brain is kind of dull if you're like man i don't really get it like i get he's stupid you know like well, a, well they film those half hours too they would have other comics on yeah it was, like, it was completely like, so different so, style too somebody probably went up before him and just leveled it Oh, no way, everybody. It's Jason Ellis. I'm going on tour. I'm doing a comedy tour. Who wants to see me tell jokes? Hey, Tulsa and Appleton, Wisconsin and Louisville. I don't even think I've been to Louisville, but I'm coming to Louisville and I'm going to be in L. Wait, I'm always in L.A., but I'm doing jokes there, too. Everybody go to thejasonellis.com. Check out the dates of when I'm coming to your town to tell jokes to your face. Come on. Everybody has to go. You better go. If you leave that, if I do jokes and nobody, and you go, oh man, I didn't know that you were going to be in Tacoma. Well, wake up Tacoma because I'm coming all over you. Whoops. Oh, I did my, my half hour special Comedy Central was me and Stephen Lynch, like a Oof. pretty popular guitar comic. <laughs> and Gu- I was essentially unknown. Wait, but it's your special. Half hours they did half two. Half hours they would do two and one thing. And so it wasn't, because oh. they weren't expecting you even to draw your audience. Okay. But the thing was, he was far more known because he was on Opie and Anthony. Okay. A bunch of Stephen Lynch. And so it was his audience. He went first. And then I had to stay and go on after, like, on his audience afterwards. You know, you guys always say if there's somebody does real bad before you, it's bad. Yeah. Do you, that's, I, do you I, swear I, by I that? Before my special, my half hour special. You did the same thing has happened to you? Half hour special. He went on and bombed in front of me. And is that, you would, you would have said to yourself, oh, great. Well, but yeah, because I got to. You got to get the crowd to wake up again. going again. Right. So he went out and he had, like, a map of his, where he, and he kept referring to every bomb. He would just be like, I'm from there. And he had the thing behind him, and they were just like, yeah, go fuck yourself. Yeah. And that was back with the Opie and Anthony crowd. So I had a lot of those fans there. And okay. They, they just weren't having whatever shit. Oh, okay. Was, so they were kind of there for you. Yeah, they were, but it was still like a, sh- your backstage like, shit. Right. Because you want the guy to do good. <laughs> yeah. You want to walk out to like a heated crowd. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. best is he's getting ready is, like I said, I like people, like I always brought people on the road, me especially who do well in front of me. Yeah before I go on because I want the crowd to be in a good mood. Yeah. Uh, some people believe in the concept. There's a lot of comics they would say they know they purposely brought people that would eat shit in front of them because they like the idea of saving the day. But there is that weird middle spot where you're like, like showcase shows like you do at the OR, the comedy store or something yeah. when a crowd sort of sucks. Right until the last minute though, there is a moment when everyone's going, crowd sucks, crowd sucks. Something inside you as a comic is going like, yeah, for you guys. Like, right. let me go out there and show. Yeah. And then it's so funny how fast you switch. Like, if your first two things don't go, you go, this crowd sucks, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's right with them. <laughs> last, last night I did a show, and there was a, it was like a, the back of a restaurant kind of thing, so it's not like the greatest kind of vibe. And it was when I went in there, it seemed like people were upper class people. And I was like, oh, great. Because one of my jokes that I knew I was going to say was about um, sucking off a trans hooker. And I was like, oh, this is going to go well. And then the person that went before me, she's a nice lady, but she was like a religious lady that said she she just uh, recently, uh, she's been a virgin since she was 31 because her vagina shrunk from her religious upbringing. <laughs> and I was like, I started laughing because I was like, I'm next. And I'm like, this is so bad. Like, you're like, Ew, I made somebody touch my vagina finally. And I'm like, oh, uh, and I'm like, this is gonna, this is gonna be weird, but. I had that weird feeling where I was like, I'm going to wake him up. Yeah. And I think instead of, because I also had that thing where I'm like, if I was a seasoned comedian, I would say that this would be the worst setup ever. But I just feel like they don't know that comedy has started yet. 
Yeah. So that's what go, I, let me go show them what's up. That's what I told myself. <laughs> and then I made fun. I wrote a new bit because of traffic about cars and how much they piss me off. And I wrote down and I was like, all your car. I'm sure every so one of you has at least one of these cars because I was, I think it's like eight to nine cars that I shit on. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, S people that drive these cars that are in the crowd be like, hey, man, what are you talking about? But mm -hmm. I just said, just we're all consumers, right? Like, I put myself on the list because I got a BMW, so don't worry about it. And then I went into it, and it was like, I'm like, okay, I'm going to be okay. And then I blew a trans hooker, and it all worked out. <laughs> so I left the pizza shop, and I could feel like Boogie Nights playing when I left. I was like, this is what it's like, man. You won in front of 30 people. You're a killer. Oh, those are the best feelings, though. It really and was. You get, like the shit crowd. And all the way to the car. Oh. So it would last longer, you know? Like heroin. <laughs> Taking a real ride. No, that's the, the one of the shittiest things of comedy, especially on the road. I said it's that it's. It, I'm sure huge rock stars have the same thing on a much grander scale. But that switch, even from like a comedy club, like at some point of your night, an hour ago. You were just yeah. taking pictures, and everyone couldn't believe and wants to know yeah. where you're going next. And you're blah, blah, blah. and you're like, "Sorry, guys, I gotta go." Oh, you, you gotta go. I gotta go. And then, like, you know, I said, like, thirty minutes later, you're like yeah. buying a drumstick at the front of the hotel yeah. thing. Like, I'm gonna go lay on my belly and watch YouTube I'm videos. So it's like, and it's a very that change in like pace. I don't know if it's great for you mentally all the time. It's very it's anticlimactic. Yeah, comedy is anticlimactic. That's crazy because that's the like I was telling you the one I did in Tacoma the other day. It was the best I've ever done in front of people that I was like, this is not going to go good for me. And everyone was like, I don't even know who you are. You're awesome. And it was all eh, eh, blah, blah, blah. And the club was like, hey, man, we want to, like you to come back and headline. I'm like, really? And then I walked back to the hotel because the main guy like gets a, I mean, a, 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 a car and all that stuff. And I, it was cold and I got out there and I walked and it was immediately dark and empty real quick. Like it seemed like half a block and it was like, there's not. There's nothing. It's like oh, I, I might even get robbed. Like it's pretty bleak. And also calling any of your friends. You didn't come through a world of like comics for years and years, so there's no one to even relate that to. Yeah, None yeah. I went call. back to the room and was like, I don't even drink or do drugs anymore. So I was like, what? They didn't have movies, so I was like, I watched TV, and it was like really lame TV, and I was like, so this is it, man. Like yeah. this is laptop, dude. If I keep Laptop's going, game changer in your life. Oh, laptop. I gave up laptops for the show. No, they're the show. My laptops are for the show. Hey, you take a laptop. I don't unplug right them. on the road, and it's the best. You what can do watch you watch? Everything. Oh yeah, everything. All Start things. a series. Things that uh, <laughs> things that Christine will never want to watch. Uh, long YouTube uh, child predator hunts. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that true, seems true great. crime shit. Yeah, 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 kids, if you want to get into comedy. This is what you get. Uh, yeah. You're by yourself on your oh, stomach in your down underwear, watching true crime on YouTube. On my downtime, I have gotten uh, mixed up and gone on a couple of these hunters. You went with them. A couple of I them. I want to go bad, but I think that I shouldn't go because I will wreck you. Don't go. Right. That's going to be, yeah, the cops are going to, it. it'll be bad for, yeah, yeah, that would work out bad. But I know. Uh, three, you see that rich guy that got caught that's like some famous. The, the uh the yeah they just caught him the director guy or whatever yeah, it was um one uh, of those things what was it it was like a was Roger a Rabbit or he was like a he did kids movies and they caught they came in and he was he was an he old had to go with, with him fifteen year old yeah and he's like that's just, my daughter no is that the one you're talking about no this is like two days ago yeah he and he's like, like we were just flirting what's the big deal yeah, he goes, it's no, like we're she's just getting 15. pizza we're getting pizza yeah. He's like, yeah, you can't get a pizza with a fifteen-year-old. Yeah, and they put I it on blast, like it's getting, it's getting out there. But then they, yeah, they is that the one where they, they shot the, you know, the um, reveal. So as he's walking down the street, the guy had a blue and a pink. You know, you pull it and it just shoots pink dust. <laughs> yeah. So he's walking down the street and the guy's going, pop. Oh, that's what he's, that's on the back of his jacket. They shot pink on him and then they shot blue on him. Yeah. Like the reveal things. So they, just, as he's walking, he's just got pink dust and yeah, blue that's dust the guy. in the back. Yeah. Yeah. He's oh. some big time director guy. I don't think he's going to be doing for no, kids you know movies. By the way, yeah, I went with I went with the Dads Against Predators in Detroit. How did you get the? How do you? How do you? I talk about link him. Up. On, I talk about him on the show, and they hit you up, much, and they hit me up. Yeah, 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 a couple of them. So the Dads Against Predator guys I went out with. We got a guy in a grocery store in a very scary black neighborhood, and it was a white guy. Yeah, that's how much this guy wanted child. 
there, huh? <laughs> he went into this scary neighborhood, and, was, and I'll tell you what, <laughs> what's dangerous most about these things, but the public place one, every time I've done one, I'd be like, oh, I'm not going to do it. How many like times have you done time. it? Three. Uh-huh. Two. Um, this, the, this one was in a grocery, and when they caught the guy, t- this was the funniest thing. I did very few Instagram lives do I ever do. But I was like, oh, I'll do one on this one. And yeah. as, as I walk by them confronting this guy, yeah. kind of quietly at first, yeah. uh, as they see me walking by, because I told the guys, I'm just going to kind of fly on the wall here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I walk by, the guy, they're like, you piece of shit, you came here to meet a 14-year-old girl and blah, blah, blah. And as I walk by, I got my live on, I hear him go, you know who Big J Okerson is? And the guy goes, no. And I go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, that's kind of a good that's thing. A, that's a good yeah. thing. If he was like, yeah, man, I love his stuff. You'd yeah. be like, dude, really? I'm like, views of you. Yeah, he just, de- <laughs> he just, he just <laughs> really? DM'd me yesterday. <laughs> but the one, we went to a sting house. One of them was what? a girl, uh, Courtney Elizabeth. She's a female pedophile hunter. And her, and her, just her and her friend and a camera. It's so dangerous seeming. But I go to the Sting House in Indianapolis. I was out there. I brought the other comics with me. And we're, they got two guys that day. The one, as soon as he walked in and she was like, you know, this is a Sting. He turned right around and left. The other guy sat and bullshitted for a while. What and we kind of watched that. And then he left. They posted the stuff that night. And she has moderators for her page when she puts up the videos. Yeah. Randomly. The guy who came and ran out when they threw that footage up of him just coming in and out, the moderators who were brother and sister in the chat apparently go, that's my cousin. Mm-hmm. And it was their, the odds of that, it was their cousin got caught on the thing that day. What a crazy thing. How do they? Small world, huh? Uh, yeah. yeah. That's just so funny. Goes, yeah, that's what they said. Uh, court, small, goes, yeah. Guilty. They go, <laughs> do they go to court? Like, do you get them after that? Like, do they, do you charge them or do you call the authorities? Like, how does it all go? I think they try to call the authorities sometimes. I don't the know. The authorities, you're saying, sometimes don't show up? Yeah, it's a dicey business. Well, it depends on the thing. is. There's one that I watched. There's four parts where they keep catching the same midget. Wait, and, a midget that is a... But he's not, though. Again, the problem with these hunts, uh, where, where I kind of like have a weird thing, I, I think they're great, they're entertaining and stuff, but a lot of the times, you're catching a person when they show up, you're like, this guy would have showed up if the person was 80 years old, Six years old, like they're retarded. Oh, do you know what I mean? So they're showing up and they're like, "What? Well, oh, I didn't know." Yeah. And this midget guy is out of his mind. Yeah. And every time they catch him, every f- time, yeah, four times, he freaks out. He throws a hissy fit, and then they kind of like leave him alone. And then as soon as they leave, they'll message him again. And they'll be like, "Sorry about that. That was just my uncle and his film crew." Or like, they're so upset. But he's leaving tomorrow, so like we could totally hang out tomorrow. And he's like, "Thank God, can I put a baby in you tomorrow?" Then, and then he just goes right back into it. And then they show up again. By the fourth time, the cops show up and they go, "Leave this midget alone, man!" <laughs> like he's, if, you, if you don't reach out to him, this never happens. Okay, so he, I'm confu- if you were underage, he, would he hook up with them? Yes. I do think so. 100%. But that's never going to fall in his life. Shouldn't He's not he, actively looking for children. Couldn't we get him off the... Sh- like, what about if you had a little net? Like the one that you scoop out the fish out of the sea? Yeah. You know, just, whoosh, you know what I mean? And like, take him out of there? For a myriad of reasons, we could fish this guy out of the thing and just uh, throw him off a cliff. It, he's useless. Yeah. He's a broke midget. I was going to say, what kind of a job would children. he have? <laughs> not, I think he just gets social security and has his neighbor get stuff off the shelves for him. Right. It's like he just like his life is yeah. Uh, I said that's the reality TV I watch though. I like all like. That's so funny though. Their like, lives are worse. You go than on the road with Jay. Most comics go on the road and say, "You guys want to get breakfast?" Jay's like, "You want to do a hunt?" Yeah. <laughs> you want it's eggs? also a fun, quick pedophile. way to find out that your friends aren't as entertained by it as you are when they're like, "Can we leave?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, we can go." I, go, I, go, I thought we we're gonna sit here and hang at this sting house all day while pedophile. I go, "Don't you guys love that juice when they're getting ready to walk in?" You're like, "Dude, this guy's getting ready to come in. He thinks he's coming to fuck a child." It's I does. Crazy. It is kind of. I hate using the word exciting, but I like I do want. I just but I want to beat them up. Yeah. You know? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like a or at least threaten them. You know. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's online therapy. So wake up, America. Has this got a Canada too? It does. They're also crazy. Wake up, you crazy Canadians. You guys got funny eyes. If there's any loco or loca Mexicans listening, you are also welcome to get some help online. You don't need to go to the office. Mucho gracias. 
my Spaniard friends <laughs> have traveled the world and I'm here to <laughs> inform you that therapy is a safe space to get things off your chest and you can figure out how to work through whatever is weighing you down. If there's anything that you want to be able to do in your safe space, in your comfy chair, in your comfy pants, with maybe you still sleep with a stuffed animal. We're not judging you. I am, but hey. for the purposes of this, oh, man. of this ad, I'll tell you, I'm not judging you. You get to be Thank in you. your in your own personal space, online entirely. It's private. It's discreet. It's convenient. If you're thinking of starting therapy, why not give BetterHelp a try? I personally endorse therapy. I've done it my whole, well, not my whole life, but the good parts. Get it off your chest with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Ellis today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Ellis. Do you think they could be rehabbed? I don't think that's nah. a rehabable thing. You got to do, you got, I think they should be castrated. I think that's fair. Chemical castration, nah. or the old fashioned way. My my cat, I haven't had time to cut his balls off, and now he's over a year old, and he like marks stuff in the house all the time. And I live here by myself with five other dogs. And I ain't got time to clean up little piss stains everywhere. And I thought about it. I love it. He's my best friend. Like we are seriously like homies for life. And a couple of times I thought, man, I just snip him right now. Like just, <laughs> and just I'll fuse it. Yeah, fuse it with like a hot knife or whatever, and be like, I'm sorry, but. I can't do it anymore. And I don't have time to do this professionally. Right. <laughs> so yeah. ramble if, ball I, ball if I can contemplate doing it to him, I'll definitely do it to those guys. No problem. And I've touched balls before. I ain't, I ain't afraid. It can all be handled with a Rambo knife, dude. There's a match in there. There's some fishing line and some sewing. I'm not sewing. You're not going to sew? He's going to burn it shut? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Is that the cat right yeah. there? He's got big balls. Right? Those and, balls are yeah. damn. I've I mean, never seen cat balls that big. Yeah, <laughs> they, good... they challenge me. They like <laughs> talk to me. They're like, what's up, man? You want to go? I'm like, dude, I really do. I want them off. It's like she, uh, the, the, the cat sleeps in a bigger bed than you here. <laughs> <laughs> it sleeps in my bed. Right. Takes up half the wins. room. You got to yeah. save those balls. Those, those balls. Don't Be a good necklace out. or an earring Probably or something. fantastic yeah. necklace. Sometimes I flick him. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Do the are the balls as sensitive on a, on a cat? Nah, you think? nah, because like just yesterday I was like, Bing, 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 and he was like, What's up? Uh -huh. If you did that to me, I'd be like, Ah, so yeah, I think they're pretty dead inside. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, but I've, yeah. I've never seen cat balls either. That was my first was cat first. ball. He's got a lot of gusto, they're behind him. Yeah, no, they stick out that when he was first here. They were like hard and coming right out the back, and now they've dropped because he's a man. Yeah. And now they sweat, and because he's got little legs, there's no room for anything to get in the middle. So each back of the hamstring bounces it off the other one. So it's like a bam, 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 bam when he walks. He's a pretty funny guy. He doesn't even know it. When you were singing earlier, I said all these different lives you've had, uh, you know, pro athlete. Uh -huh. it, it was singing ever. Were you in bands? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I think you told me that before. It was a joke band. Telly was the guitarist. We oh, made really? It. Yeah. Well, well, I started. That's the only band you did. Oh, I know. I was in a band when I was a little kid, and we, we played a few gigs, and then I moved to America to be a pro skateboarder. I was like, sorry, guys, like, because that was pretty. Like, we were okay, but it was. I was a way better skateboarder than I was a, a heavy metal singer, and everybody else in the band was. No, we already hated it. We already were fighting. And They're like, but Jason, Dingo cunts just on the verge of getting signed. <laughs> that would have been a better name than what we had. What was it? Hellhounds and Thundercats were the two names that we had. They were. Ter it was a terrible band. But, <laughs> but we did a band. I used to make fun of the bands because I used to be on Faction as a music channel. And I had to play bands that I don't like, which is almost every band, if it's not Metallica or ACDC. At that particular time in my life, there was only five bands that I liked. So... Mm -hmm. Everything they played, I hated. So I'd say, this band's the worst, that band's the worst. And then my boss was like, you know, you can't say that. Like, go on, <laughs> go on MySpace and like, look at them so you have something else to say. And I was like, this guy looks like, a, you know, I'm still now making fun of the way they look and the way they sound. <laughs> and he's like, dude, this is the worst. And, I, and then, you know, a few people were like, well, you couldn't do that. And I was like, yes, I could do that. And then we made a song making fun of Blink-182 where it was apple juice. And I was like, hey, man, got a flower? And did like that kind of voice as well. I was like, I could even do his voice. And then a, a band came in with a record label and the record label guy was like, hey, do you guys want a record deal? And I was like, you're, 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 you've lost your balls, right? Like, you don't make no sense. No, but yeah, because that's hilarious. 
And then there was another guy that worked at Sirius who was way more musically inclined than all of us. Like he could actually make an album. And he had a home studio. That yeah. Was critical so to we this. was between the three of us, and then there's other the other co-host who had less musical. Uh, ability than all of us but he was a very funny guy and willing to go for it he was like our muse <laughs> like, <laughs> what it was. just take your shirt off and stand there yeah. what do you play i, I play guitar nice yeah. he was in a proper band before he was at serious so he they the other guys had been in real bands i was more of a skateboard singer i like could i i play guitar a little bit but not not really like I, i'm being reality based no he was really in a band and so was the other guy christian they were proper musicians so when we did the band, we made an album. Like the first song that we played, everybody loved it on Sirius. All the fans were like, dude, this is the sickest thing ever. And then my boss at the time was like, uh, we don't want you to play that anymore. And I was like, why not? And he's like, because it doesn't fit the channel. If you do a song that's like, and I was like, well, I don't like the music on the channel. And he's like, well, if you do a song that's like uh, up to what's going on in the world today, then I guess we could play that. So then we wrote a new song and we just did all the things in the news and the, the but the the chorus is can I shoot a load on your face? But the, <laughs> but the rest of the lyrics are about what was happening in the news that day. And I was like, Fran, there you go, that's relevant. People say that you're we didn't start the fire. <laughs> pretty, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but it got it was on the Billboard charts. You were on the Billboard charts. <laughs> yeah, we were like right up there. And I was like, man, we make money. And because the record label made all the money and we didn't get any, then we were like, oh, screw that. We quit the label, started our own band, our own label changed the name so we were taint stick at the very first we were tony hawk's taint stick and then tony's manager called me and said did you know tony sells things at coles and i was like yeah i do why and she was like just think about it for a second and i was like gotcha oh you the band's called taint stick now yeah we took the name off and then and then when we quit taint stick and started death death die and death death die was on the on itunes it was one to fourteen like, cause I call cause the show used to be big yeah. and I was like, we got a new album out and if you guys get it, <clears throat> it'll help us like try to, we wanted to see if one of them would make it into the top 10. Every song made it all the way from what, like all North America, hard rock, everything. Now he's going to come say hello and show you. Yeah, yeah we, ru we ruled the Canadian charts for like a week. Yeah. Did you do live gigs? Yeah. We did. Played the Roxy, the Rainbow. I'm surprised that you didn't Everywhere. have more of an itch. I mean. To, like I, I, Jeez, just, I can't. Balls. I mean, these balls are fucking nuts. They're crazy. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I feel like he's alphaing the room right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those are man, fantastic nuts. Those are people balls. Those are uh, those are great nuts. <laughs> They're pretty fun. <laughs> Is it bad if I touch it? But I'm surprised. Nuts? Hey, <laughs> I'm surprised that you because I, I I will say, just in the, the the only experience I really have with it, with singing. In front of a live crowd or being like the front of a band is when doing that comedy. Have you done the comedy jam yet ever? No. Nah. Okay. Drink of those balls. Oh, I mean, look at those things. These are fantastic nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I gotta say. A little bit envious. I mean, and the cat feels like a nut. Yeah, yeah, you know. Like, I mean, he you kinda gotta, smells like him. You gotta feel that. Feel that nut, Jay. Yeah, get in there. Oh, wow. They're dense. Uh, they're dense. They're fantastic. Everybody I loves your balls, Rumble Bean. You're a huge hit. Well, your like balls it. are anyway. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so what are you like saying? The cat looks like it's made of balls entirely. He is, <laughs> pretty much. It's made entirely of ball skin. Yeah, well, what are you, I'm, where I are you was going? I'm surprised that you didn't like pursue that. Because I feel like at the at the best comedy set never feels or looks as awesome as performing music. I think it's like much yeah, more. Yeah, but I, I never. It's a, it's a I, different high. I never took myself serious. It's the same as fighting. Like, I can fight, but I know people that are real fighters. Like, I'm a real fighter. I'm a real C class fighter. Like I know, but I train with A class fighters. So to me, because I'm an A class skateboarder, I don't, I refuse to give myself props for that. Like if Logan Paul comes in and goes, I fight, I'm like, dude, you're a bum. I'll beat your ass and I will beat his ass. But he's on TV going, oh, oh Mayweather. I'm like, dude, you suck. Because I know real fighters out there. That can destroy those guys. I'm why sure, did you, why I'm did sure you've you touched Same on. with music. Like, I, yeah, was I in a band? Did we play? Like, dude, the guy from Ozzy, Blasco, mm -hmm. he was the, he played bass when we did uh, Crazy Train. Like, and we hammered it out. Yeah, he was Vinny, a Rob Vinny, Zombie Vinny, for a long time. Vinny yeah, Paul he, saw us play and yeah. was like, you guys are freaking awesome. I love you guys. Like, we were, we were good, but I'm not, I'm not a real 
musician. Like I, I know me. I'm not why worthy. Did you, why did you quit fighting though? Because I'm 50 and I've got <laughs> brain damage. I've been knocked out like 50 times. Yeah. Yeah. And then I had Tony Hawk and Andrew. You know Andrew Huberman, that brain scientist guy. Yeah. I'm friends with him, and he those those two cornered me and said, you know, all the concussions you've had. He's like, you can keep skating because I get knocked out skating still. He's like, you can't keep getting knocked out fighting. So you know, the only person I'd fight is Lewis because I know he can't knock me out. But to have a real <laughs> fight again, it's just like I, I, I don't want to fight to be to have a record to to tell people that I'm, you know, five and oh or whatever. I, I wanted to fight because I wanted to see how tough I was. And the last fight, the last pro fight I had, I got almost knocked out in the first round and almost knocked out in the second round. And then I broke the dude's arm in the last round. And I was like, how much more do I need to test myself? I know that if you, or you to beat me, you better kill me. And I wasn't sure. Now I know. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I don't need to, you know what I mean? Like, am I a tough guy? I know I'm tough. I don't need to know anymore. Were and you, I don't need anyone else to know anymore. I'm fine. Were you in a, a lot? Did you grow up in a lot of street fights? Not really. I got beat up a lot at school. And, yeah. and I got beat up. I never was a person that, it's funny, one of my Muay Thai coaches is like, you were a bully when you were a kid, huh? And I was like, no. He's like, you won't. I'm like, no. You just think I am, right? Because I got a bunch of tattoos. I'm like, I'm a terrified child. I made this to keep you away from me. I'm not a tough guy. I hate confrontation. I'm not into like street. If you push a lady over, yeah, I'll sleep you for sure. But it's got to be for that reason. If it's like, hey, man, you're a fag. I'm like, yeah, maybe I am. So well, it's like justice. Yeah, it's like <laughs> justice. I don't, yeah, then I'll, then I'll go. You like if a bunch of dudes sure. are trying to jump you, I'll go. It's an interesting thing you just said because it's also the same. Like my tattoos are not fully indicative of my personality. I At all. People think. This is built. I you built know, this. the same thing. It's like so people will look and go, it's like, that's a big scary guy. Because actually I'm pretty jolly. That's what yeah. I am. <laughs> yeah, you're a friendly guy. So am I. I'm just, I think I'm, I act tough because I'm so scared. That's what I think it really is. That's why I got into fighting because I was like, okay, you've been acting tough for a long time, man. It might be like, how tough are you? And then when I train with all these dudes that are in the UFC and like pro boxes and stuff, yeah, like I know, I know. Like I've fought, I've sparred like Dan Henderson and Keith Jardine. I'm not that good. You know, like I've had guys, like I'm, I'm giving them everything and they're like, whack. And I'm like, oh, and they're like, keep it going, man. Keep it going. I'm like, you're, yeah. you're treating me like a child. You know, you're like, good, good work, Jay. Like I've hit somebody with everything I've got and they've gone, good job, man. And I'm like, good job. That was everything I've got. And like I've, <laughs> Dan Henderson once congratulated me for landing an overhand right on his face. He was like, oh, nice one. I'm like, that, everybody else I've ever hit is snoring with that. You gave me a thumbs up. Are you serious? Like that's when I, that's why I know there's levels, and I don't want well, to pretend to be that. What do you? What's your take? I'm sure you've said this on stuff already. But what's your take on the Logan or uh, Jake Paul Tyson? Do you think I kind of had like it's a the bit weird. if it's if it's real, t if Tyson probably will catch him. Uh, but if but if Tyson doesn't catch him early, I think Jake Paul's gonna just like take him the distance and like win on like points or something. I mean, you never know because. I, I, first of all, I think all the fighters, when he fought MMA guys, I think it was rigged. I think they got paid to go the distance. Yeah. I think Anderson Silva beats Jake Paul. When I see Jake Paul spar, when I see him shadow box, he's not as good as me. He's he's more amateur than I am. You don't think he came, when he hit Woodley, that wasn't a real KO? I, dude, if you paid me $2 million, you think I won't take that shot? I'll you, take I'll take it for a hundred grand. You give me a thousand, <laughs> I'll take that. You Cash. lie. Let's keep dialing. <laughs> you lie. <laughs> but they but they I think that people don't realize their MMA fight. Like I did this before Jake Paul. I beat UFC fighters in a boxing fight because MMA fighters can't box. Right. And if you don't let them kick you and elbow you and grapple you. And you've been boxing straight for three years and they've been doing grappling and MMA and the ju jujitsu and knees and kicks. You'd be surprised how it's not so much how like they can still hit hard. They just have bad habits. It's kind of like if you shoot and then you get tactical training and you've been shooting for a couple of years versus someone that's not shot at all and they get tactical training, there's, they don't have any bad habits. So like when you throw a punch, your hand comes back to a certain spot. MMA guys push their front hand out. There's a Muay Thai thing they do where they'll circle off and put their hand out. In boxing, you do not do that. You cannot do that.
Because you're leaving yourself open. Yeah, and there's like inside game. There's like little footwork things and and foot patterns that that boxers know that MMA MMA guys. It's almost like their ego refuses to learn it. You know, like they're just like, I, dude, I, do you know who I've beat up? And it's like, yeah, you have beat up a lot of people, but if you go against a guy that has good boxing fundamentals, he's gonna catch you. But do you think Mayweather like? took a dive to Logan Paul. I think Mayweather didn't give a shit about that fight. Mayweather didn't get hurt either. No, no, And he sure. definitely won that fight. He got flurried at the start and was like, good for you, dude. But when you think about a guy that weighs that much more, going ape shit on you, and you don't get hurt, that means he doesn't care. And yeah. then at the end, if he wanted to go, he could have. Uh, to me, I saw him go, all right, you're getting tired. I'm going to land some shots, but he didn't come in and try to kill him. Like, if you see him spar at his gym against other dudes, he didn't, he wouldn't, he didn't look like that. He could kill that guy. Yeah, you say it's that easy. So all this Jake Paul stuff is just Thunder Lips and Rocky. It really, like, to me, it's Tyson is, like, I'm 52, man. And I, if I'm, now that I don't smoke weed and I don't do any of the things that I used to do, Tyson's obviously a different kind of animal than me, but he is older than me. But his background in boxing, his head movement and his foot patterns, and you don't lose your power when you get older. Like, it, I can tell when I see all these new pad hitting things. He's slower. He's way slower than he used to be. Mm -hmm. But, like, he slips and then both feet slip out to the side. And there's only a few. There's Nobody in the heavyweight world still does that. Like, he's the only person that can do that. But when you do it as a little bit slower... It's nowhere near as dangerous as it used to be. Like there used to be ones where he would move and you'd look over there and he'd move back over here and he's behind you. So by the time you turn around, he's he's already punching you. Hey everybody, this episode is brought to you by Blue Chew, the future of erections. I'm Jason Ellis and I've, I'm packing. And sometimes, uh, I mean, I need extra blood down there so that I can flick my cat over the fence and i'm capable of doing anything with uh, once i uh, chew one of these bad boys and i'll never give them up i have them in my butt bag i have them in my closet i have them in socks i have them you never know i have one in my socks sometimes and i pull it out like a weapon like 007 type shit, where i pull it out and and chew on it and then kick a goal, if you know what I mean. If you went to prison, you'd probably sneak a couple in in your butt. And I'd be a huge hit there. Literally. <laughs> right. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Yeah. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. Yeah, literally. We've got a special deal for you, our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo Did you code. Say free, Michael? Uh, try Blue Chew free. Yes, that's wow. exactly what I said. All you Are need you to listening, do everybody? Free Do you boners. Want a giant boner for free? Aren't you tired of overpriced boners? Yeah. Get Blue Chew free when you use our promo code Ellis at checkout. You're just going to pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code Ellis to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Oh, I'm a cheese. One of my favorite. I've only, I can only really find it in one of those documentaries about him where it's the, it's the speed that he's going under. He was a kid. Yeah. But he's going the rope through the middle of the ring. Yeah, he's yeah, going yeah. under the rope and yeah. throwing the uppercuts. Yeah, dude, and it's watch it. That's, a, that's a training thing that everybody does. Watch anybody else in the heavyweight division do that. It's not that impressive. He had a move, though. He did it that, like he was a 150 pounder. That slip and move was his thing, right? That was I mean, it was it's Customato's Customato did thing, it. but yeah. for, but nobody because he was two twenty, but he was so short and compact that his body could do it like a one eighty yeah. or like a one fifty even. Right. Like when I spar little guys, little pro boxers, that's the most humiliating sparring I've ever had in my life. Like I've sparred heavyweights before where they'll they'll crack me and I'm like, okay, that sucks, but it's a fair shot. I see it a little bit at least. I've spied like 160 pound guys that are pro boxers where I'll throw a punch and I'll see that they're already behind me. And if, and if, if I'm trained, like when I was younger, I'd be like, what the? And then he punched me. Like now if I see it, I just run away. But there's guys that I've spied before where they just bob up and down. And I'm like, and I'm like, dude, and I'll, I'll turn, dink. And then, I'll, and then I'll throw. And then they're back under there. And then I'll turn, dink. And I'm like, this is 
fucking humiliating, dude. Like, I look like an idiot. I'm not even doing any boxing anymore. I'm just going, peek-a-boo, bink, peek-a-boo, bink. And I'm like, I don't even, what What are these? These don't even do anything anymore. I'm just like, here, hit, oh, over here, hit me here. Like, I don't even, I don't see where it starts. Me and the, uh, a bunch of comics used to box every, like, three times a week. We'd go to boxing class. Your nose looks like it's been hit a lot. When I was a kid, I used to get beat up a lot. But we used to go to oh. boxing classes, and then I got so cocky, I was like, I want to spar. Yeah. And he put me in the ring with a Filipino woman. <laughs> and she fucking tatted he, he me up. He knew it, yeah. She fought, I mean, and it sucks. Yeah. When you get hit in the head, yeah. there's something, your brain's like, oh, I don't want to do this. Well, you just got to catch just, her once, dude, and it's no, oh, That's, dude, that's she, your biggest mistake, where you're like, it's coming, it's coming, yeah. and it doesn't. You just get tired, and <laughs> I, he, she keeps punching you in the face. I think if they played yeah, Maroon 5. I'm going to punch five, you right back down the China. If they played Maroon I'm from 5. China. I can't uh, wait to hear this angle. If they, if they played Maroon 5 uh, payphone. Yeah was what I learned to, I'd probably beat the shit out of her. Well, that was the most, that's the most dangerous sentence I've ever heard anybody say in my life. A lot of yeah. go off. Wait lucky. a minute, everybody. Do you have Maroon 5 right now? Because I'm ready for war. What if it did work? And I was just like, I gotta pay. <laughs> yes. my what if it did? The entrance music for fighting is, I am blown away by how all over the place it is. You'd think it would be, if nothing else, a bunch of genre, any genre, but like, Aggressive hype. I oh, mean, I know some the people come to out to the cheesy. I mean, you know Mickey, why? Poor Mickey Gall was like, he was coming out to Hey Mickey. I'm like, because that's you, not getting you amped up. Yeah, but you can't. That's the. If I used to think about, I learned this. If you get pumped up music and you're a person that doesn't control your emotions well, you're gonna you're gonna blow your load before you fight. Yeah, you get super pumped before the fight. To me, one of my coaches, Justin Fortune, who was like, he fought Lennox Lewis, like he was a proper heavyweight boxer, and he was like, you're having fun. You're looking at the crowd. You can high five everybody. When the bell goes, it's time to kill somebody. Do not flick that switch until it is the last second. Because when they face off and you look at him, he's looking at you, and you got some killer eyes and you're breathing heavy. It's like, what for? You're not allowed to punch him yet. You could smile at him, be happy, walk back to your corner when they hit that bell. Fucking kill him. Didn't they say that about Dante Wilder when he fought Fury? All that shit coming in, that big mask he had on. Yeah. By the time he got to the ring, he was exhausted. It's yeah, too I much. think he said that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've seen BJ Penn do it too. Where I, I've because I've done this. You <laughs> rage out like when you're coming towards a ring and you're like, "This is I've been training my whole life for this. I'm gonna kill this guy. I've been thinking about killing this guy for three months." And I, and, and I saw BJ tear up, like, but not like sad tears, tears of rage. And I was like, "Oh my god, dude! Like he is tearing up in rage. Like <laughs> this is rage tears. He's gonna kill this guy." And he got destroyed because. He'd already like blown half his load on the way to the he cage. Got, got fired up talking to his ancestors <laughs> on the walk in. Yeah. I swear, yeah. that's they really do, what he did. They yeah. do the smelling salts too, and you wake up and you go, "What happened?" The last thing I remember was losing myself to the music <laughs> the moment I owned it. Yeah. I just, I, I, just heard, I just heard Maroon Five, and I just, <laughs> everything went what white. The last thing I heard was adult contemporary yeah. rock. I went out to Mark Anthony for my last fight because I was like just gonna dance and feel salsa beats, and because I'm like if I, I'm bad at salsa and I have to ma think to make my feet do salsa dancing and i was like i'm just gonna like think about my foot doing salsa dancing because i don't want to think about the fight there's no way out of it we're walking to the ring it's gonna happen i think the save it i think anderson silva was the perfect one the ain't no yeah. sunshine uh, dmx song that's the perfect kind of energy for that see he was another he was the he stayed calm in the fight yeah but uh, uh, Amanda he would dance Nunez, while he beat you i also like when things come from like uh you tell someone from, someone from another country where things get popular later, like Amanda Nunez coming out to Eye of the Tiger by uh, yeah. Katy Perry. You're like, little on the nose, Nunez. Dude, the worst one is uh, Junior Dos Santos came out to Rocky Balboa. And I'm like, <laughs> have you ever enjoyed a song in your life? Like, do you even, I feel like he's so not musical that he was like, I don't know, what's a good fight song? Rocky's got fighting in it, right? Like, I, he just seemed like somebody was like, yeah, da, 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 da. I'm like, dude, nobody plays that before a fight. Mm -hmm. I do. Like, I guess everybody gets a crowd pump. I'm like, you suck, dude. You really suck. McGregor, what he had, Sinead O'Connor. That yeah. was actually. Uh, McGregor has, yeah, like he can make you a star. You know, not only can he make him a star, yeah. he's he'd be a great at agent. Yeah. You know, you're like he'd be like, "Here's what you gotta do, you make first wear these shorts, have this hair, can't go to the news and say fuck." Blah, blah. Like and whatever he tells you to do, whatever watch he tells you to wear, you should do it because yeah. he's a genius. Yeah, Conor McGregor. Yeah, he's figured something. He's out coming for back sure. now, right? He's fighting. yeah. I don't know. 
Is that going to be bullshit or what? You I think? mean, he has a chance to win because the guy he's fighting is not that good, and he and the and the guy that he's fighting likes to brawl, and Connor's a pinpoint striker, so he could land a shot and knock him out for sure. Yeah, but Connor's done. Yeah, like the thing that made Connor. People don't get it, man. Con, try to like look at a photo of Connor when he had two belts. His head was twice the size of his body because he was starving. Yeah, he was not a one forty five pound yeah. man. Like that guy walks around two hundred pounds now. So now he's fighting people where if he lands that pinpoint shot, you're landing against a guy who's big. And bigger dudes don't go down on that shot. He so gained it's a all that game. weight just to ruin my favorite movie remake. You did not care for Roadhouse. I hated it. You hated it. I was it. so upset with it. It was well, a perfect movie that didn't need to be remade, that's true. especially like okay, that. Okay, I agree. To me, I don't see it as anything to do with the first one. It sure isn't. It's just. It's like you know when the WWE has movies now, where they mm -hmm. go, they got like John Cena is in, in a movie. This is the UFC movie. It's just like, look, everybody. Yeah, but your favorite the, UFC fighter is a Hollywood was, actor. That movie was, I mean, it was TNA. It was sex. It was chicks. The first one. Yeah. The first yeah, one. It was it was also, like, but Swayze is unmatchable. Like I, but, as an actor. Yeah, and he was a cooler. He was cool. But just he, the he place, wasn't cool in real but life. also just to play the location no, of really. it. Really. I thought and, I heard. And the problems involved here, you have to keep the original one was essentially a mafia guy who was running and taking like a, a, a taste from everybody's money all over the town. Yeah, yeah. He's kind of controlling the town in this bum fuck place in Missouri. This one was about a mean man who's trying to build a resort on the Florida Keys. Yeah. And this lady and her shithole is holding up the building. <laughs> and yeah. Like, like. Why don't you just take the buyout, move a mile down, and rebuild your bar? Yeah. It was... Nothing about it made... The concept made no sense. No. Well, you know I mean? A retired UFC fighter that killed a guy at the UFC also made no sense. Yeah, why'd he kill him? Because he, if he gets hit too much, he rages out, and he can kill anybody when he rages out. Like I said, doesn't make sense. No. Well, I also said the thing that he's living with this, which they didn't make it seem like he's living with that much guilt for... Killing the guy in the ring, I, I still that's a that's a ninety five percent, if not a hundred percent, referee's mistake. That's a referee's issue. All right, this is on Herb Dean. This is on yeah. Herb. Dean. I mean, he did try to he did try to get him off, but he just could, didn't do a good job. Hey, he did just, not do a good enough job. You uh, got to yeah, separate he, him. He didn't take any of the money at the end. This guy had no cash. He yeah, a, right. A, a yeah, and he didn't have a drug addiction or anything. So, like, where did the money go that when you were? Like a championship UFC fighter, what'd you spend it on? Like dirty T-shirts? Yeah. It seemed like yeah. it seemed like he never ha he never had like a bad and, habit. And he and he heals quicker than anybody. He got stabbed twice. Yeah, and he's same just, spot. That's why. Same spot. Yeah, duct tape is like everybody knows that works. Yeah, you know? it works. It was just I said everyone they've done. I haven't liked one of the my childhood movie remake. They did Flatliners. They Terrible. did? Wait, they did? They yeah. redid Flatliners. Doesn't uh, need to be remade because uh, I agree. it was a cast. It was not a great movie. It was a great cast of like the yeah. people that time. And uh, Point Break, they redid. Oh, sucked. yeah, that was terrible. Again, it's Swayze. I didn't get all the way through it. How could you? It, that's Swayze, Keanu Reeves, and, uh, and Gary Busey. Yeah, which is crazy because he sucked in that movie, but in such an awesome way. Yeah. Like, he was so good. But when I watch it, I still cringe. Johnny Utah? Yeah. When he does the, sur or, you know what I mean? The, these bank robbers are surfers. And I'm like, dude, please don't do that. Please don't Guys, say it like that. Oh, the concept alone, he goes, well, you're going to have to immerse yourself in the surf world yeah, now. I know. <laughs> so just go to the local surf show be like, uh, my parents died in a plane crash. I just totally want to get bombed, dude. You know what I'm saying? You're going undercover. <laughs> As a parasailer. <laughs> he may hey, as well. Hey, Officer Utah, how do you feel about going undercover as an adrenaline junkie? <laughs> <laughs> well, I did used to play football, you know. And then I love how they, they know that he's a pro, was a, a, a almost a pro football player. Whatever happened to you, man? Well, I mean, I did become a police officer and then I was in the FBI, but obviously no connection anymore. Yeah, whole movie is, is, is debunked by Google. Yeah. There's a simple Google goes, let me look up what this guy's been up to. It says here you're a cop and you love going under cover. And you, yeah. <laughs> I didn't think, well, they didn't have it, so. Yeah, there's no, no internet back then. That was, I it was funny watching a movie have to go through, or a show have to go through those changes. That show Supernatural, that's what yeah. I watched over yeah. quarantine, all 15 seasons. Within that show, it came from times where they had to be like, you know, they had flip phones, and it was like, we have to go back to the hotel and hop on the computer 
and look up this old haunted place or whatever to buy the, the season 11 of the show everything was like you didn't have to explain that they didn't have to have other locations because everything uh, was just on iPhones so yeah. you can watch that technology change that what's next I wonder it's crazy the streaming services I'm gonna die on the hill that they basically have not made one good movie between them collectively like I have a child who's growing up in a world where he will grow up thinking movies aren't actually supposed to be good well, Wait, they, you know, they make movies now like TikTok you know the, the way they're making movies is because kids aren't consumed we, we used to be able to sit through Scarface or Carlito's Way we'd sit and watch a movie and at some points it would be boring it would you know they're telling a story now they're just trying to have quick yeah like tiktok social media moments for right. these kids so all these movies are the story is second it's like get to it get to it get to it because yeah. their t- attention spans are worse i so think it's shit movies they kids today expect because this is what they're being given movies that it's more like a theme park right yeah it's like you sit down you experience it you say i just had fun for an hour and a half i don't expect to like go home well, and go man they, we got it everybody's got to go see they this can't thing. be it's authentic in- anymore either because now they have to have everybody has to be represented. Even in Roadhouse, it's like, all right, it's a black girl that owns the bar. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then it's a lesbian, uh, le- and then there's a gay guy, and then there's, and it's like, listen, Roadhouse was hot blonde chicks. Yeah. Tits, people fucking, you know S- what I mean? It was, a, it, was a, oh, yeah. it was a bar. I had such a good laugh that where it takes you out of it. When they did, uh, I watched Grease live. <laughs> when they did when they did Grease live on TV a couple years back. Remember they were doing a thing every, once a year they were doing like, one of the big plays live on TV. I do. And same thing, they're trying to get everybody involved in this. And one of the pink ladies was black. Rizzo. I think Rizzo was black. Uh, so Stuck, Stuck or Channing? But not, but yeah, yeah that character, that character yeah, yeah. was black in this play. Like in a wheelchair? And I remember, yeah, and I remember <laughs> the scene where she, she's like in the principal's office, like with her feet up on the desk, like yeah. dominating his office, talking yeah. shit to the principal. And I was like, when he walked, I was watching with Christine, we were just laughing because... As soon as he walked in, and she was like, "Hey, Principal, buzz some some," and he, I was like, "Get your fucking feet off my!" Like, yeah. Well, you know, he was just kind of like you know ate shit and was like not weird. Like this is the fifties. He'd be like, "Get your goddamn feet off my desk, you yeah, animal, right, and get the fuck out of my." You're lucky you get to go to this school. <laughs> do they give? Do they beat children at school anymore? No, no, you can't. You can't get the cane or the belt. No, it's, it's ridiculous. But no, those are great times. Kids are actually beating teachers now. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and they're See videotaping it and yeah. fucking a million views. It's a yeah. tough thing with kids. Kids, they're, they're they know right now they're a phone call away from ruining any adult's life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I know because it seems like a kid will beat up a teacher and then the teacher will punch him and deck him and then the, the teacher's in trouble. Mm-hmm. And it's like, dude, I got assaulted like twenty five times before I hit that kid. Yeah, is is it still my fault? Well, there used to just generally be this assumption that the teachers knew what they were doing. So right. if the teacher called the parent and was like, here's the, the issue with your kid, the parents were like, <clears throat> right, you're probably correct. Yeah. So let me team up with you and fix my child. But everybody, so many people, not everybody obviously, instinctively takes the child's side. And the parent's like, am I going to risk my job for parents that are not interested in taking my advice? So cool. Your kid's perfect. There's, here's your straight A. I'll try again with the next batch. Are nuns next busy? That doesn't seem that like they're doing much. They the were aver- great. The average age of a nun in America is like 82 years old yeah, yeah but you can't either. punch a nun or do you think the youth would punch a nun i do i, I don't think they give a shit yeah there you sure. go i used to get hit i was in parochial school and i used to get hit i got hit they used too. to have like a ruler yeah you get swapped in the knuckles for i the used to get hit with a belt tie. and the belt buckle would like bruise you when it would whip around the inside of your yeah, leg yeah i got books on my head i got hit with books one day nice yeah sister patricia what a I, bitch I, I i kid next to me peed his pants when we were sitting on the floor for book reading and i started laughing and she just whacked me on the head with the books. And I got in trouble. You know, it's funny. It's for my entertainment. Like, I prefer to see things that are, like, uncensored and, you know, kind of... Oh, no, we're well aware speak. of what you like to watch. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, uncensored <laughs> stuff and things that go, like, uh, kind of that way. I'm so stoned. And I started just forget now. You threw me off with that line. Nuns beating Sorry, the better. crap. Uncensored stuff you like to watch. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, but I do think <laughs> that... that, that stuff, Solid co-host. Because... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because we're together, right? The but because everything, everything back. is like, yeah. <laughs> uh, because everything is so like everything's got to compete now. So yeah. NBC shows and stuff like that and fu- have gotten like dir- significantly dirtier yeah. than when when we were kids. And what I think now is like the the changing of all. I, I'm pr- I would bet in most high school classrooms, if the kids curse when they're talking, not at the teacher necessarily, yeah. but just like it sounds like 
George Washington was a real fucking asshole. Yeah. I don't think you get in trouble for that anymore. I don't think it's like a thing they even think of anymore. And I'm just like, there's those small little like declines in like uh, like civility is is kind of nerve wracking. I think sometimes. it depends on what school you go to. This my kid got in trouble for the teacher called once and said that uh, your your son uh, cut a, a boy's neck, and I was like, "Whew, that's pretty serious." How'd that happen? He's like, <clears throat> he ch he choked him. And I was like, well, how's he cho how'd he cut him choking him? And he's like, his nail caught him. And I was like, you mean scratched him? <laughs> and they're like, well, I get, yeah. And I'm like, T he calling me and saying to my son, cut a man's not a, a neck. Mr. Ellis, your son gave a man a Colombian necktie. Yeah, that's what, what it sounded like. It's like sometimes like, he gets in trouble for stuff where I'm like, I'm about to regu regulate you for what you've done. And then I hear the teacher and I go, don't worry about it, dude. Yeah, my kid got in trouble for beating kids up at school. And when I brought him home, I'm like, what'd you do? And he goes, well, there's five kids that were going to gang up on me and beat me up. Yeah. And I was like, well, what happened? He goes, well, I just looked at him and I went... You fuck off. Let's go. Yeah. And he called them all on. Yeah. And I go. And I push one down. I push the other one down. And I was like, "You fucking! I'll buy you something." Yeah, that's what's you, up. You're, you did the right thing. Agreed. Bobby Sons yeah. of Black Belt and Jim Carter. Are you familiar with Jim Carter? <laughs> <laughs> no, but in my brain, it's like I I remember in his his grade having a group of kids after me, and I would I would so scared I would hide under the stairs. In school until like four o'clock. Yeah. Because they were waiting for me. Yeah, it happened to me I, too. Man, I we was, got some similarities. I, 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 I got beat scared. up in the cricket nets for a whole lunch break. That was my first time I ever felt fame. People <laughs> knew me. Right, because you got your ass kicked? Yeah. Yeah. They're like, you the guy that got beat up in the cricket nets for a whole lunch break? I'm like, yeah, man, I am. <laughs> What's wow. a cricket net? It's like a uh, batting cage. Oh, okay. Cricket net? Oh, how, mate. Big Dundee, old, you know. Did you get tattoos underage? No. Nah. None ever? No. Nah, wow. 18. Interesting. In Amsterdam, Hanky Panky did it. And I remember coming back to Australia and I was like, look, I got Metallica tattooed in my leg. And my stepmom said, you regret it. Well, guess what? I think it's awesome. It's my favorite tattoo. You were wrong. Your first one? Yep. Wow. I've covered up my first one a long time ago. What? I got Because I was trying to hide it from my mom when I was 16. I got it. And uh, it was my name in old English letters. I mean, tiny up here. Yeah. And I thought my mom will never see it. And then I played basketball the next day and wore a sleeveless shirt and took off my sweatshirt in front of her. And I was like, oh, oh, shit. Dude. I got, just moved to this town. I just moved to, to South Jersey from Philadelphia. Yeah. New kid in school. And I found out very quickly that there's this place you can go to. They don't ask questions. You yeah. You can like, get them to bring a fake note from your parents. Yeah, yeah. And like, they do it for you. And I was like, great. And I got it. My mom. And I remember having to convince her. The punishments I was willing to take over her going, I'm going to go down to that tattoo parlor and have them shut down. Oh, and I yeah. Go, Way worse. Please don't make me the new kid in Cut school. Cut my finger off. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. don't make me the kid in school who got the place shut down that everyone, well, we used to be able to get tattoos. Yeah, that would be, fucking yeah, new, it's devastating. New fat kid's mom ruined everyone's life. My daughter did it. She got tattooed before she was supposed to, and I was like, right, we're getting it lasered off. And then I tried to tell the laser ple people, they're like, you'll put some cream on, some numbing cream. I was like, no, nah, no numbing cream. And they all looked at me like, you're going to seriously do that to your daughter? And I was like, all right, put some numbing because I felt like pressure. You know what I mean? Like all these, yeah. all these ladies thought I was like being a mean dad. You were, yeah. But there's <laughs> a lesson in that. Yeah. But she giggled when they lasered it, and I was like, "You bitches! <laughs> like you look at her. She doesn't even care. It didn't even hurt. She's not paying the price." She goes, "That's right. I'll get a new tattoo and get a laser off every she month." She did. <laughs> <laughs> Pain is the only way children really learn. She goes, Don't fall in love with your tattoos. <laughs> so I, I, we all know that. Come on. My my first tattoo, I was on the road with Patrice O'Neill. This guy, Vitty Favorito, was kind of a, you know, he fucked with young comics a lot. And yeah. We were going down the gig, and hey, you want a coffee? I was like, yeah. And he gave me his coffee, and he put salt in it. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, how's your coffee? And I was like, fucking great, thanks. Yeah. Like that type of guy. And he's like, how old were you? I was like 20, 23. Okay. And we're all in Philly on South Street. And uh, we went and got a massage. We did the show. We got a massage. It's my first jerk off place. Yeah. Uh, Living. And I was like, we should all get tattoos to remember the night. And I was like, fucking yeah. Yeah. We went into the place and they're all, you know, looking at tattoos. And I found mine. I'm in the chair and I'm getting this 
fucking Japanese, Anochi, uh, Friendship, no. Destiny. No, it was Destiny, Life, and Faith. But some it, didn't, shit. it didn't mean that. So I'm just sitting there. No, of course it didn't mean that. I'm sitting there like this. And I'm like, guys, you pick out your tattoo? And he's like, we're not getting fucking tattoos. You fucking <laughs> idiot. And I was like, what? Now I get this fucking queer Wait, tattoo on my ankle. You still got it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a lead. That's a lead. That's. There you go. Oh, that dude, is a piece destiny. of shit, but that is legendary. I love those tattoos. Yeah. Oh, I think, the ones about, yeah, I have, uh, yeah. I have the Asian characters on my arm. Do I say that because I don't know what uh, language it is? Probably nothing. Yeah. But I went and got uh, my my girlfriend when I was younger, her mom. I'll cover that. Her family didn't like me. And they go, um, and so I was like, I'm going to get her initials, my girlfriend's initials. Yeah, and that'll, yeah. that'll convince them that it's you're worth it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Initials, what I said, because on this particular tattoo parlor, it would be like this is an A in Chinese. This is a, it doesn't mm. exist. Oh, These things no. don't exist. No. So yeah, I get, get um, the house. I get CMS, what? Cheryl Marie, and her last name. Uh, that was her initials, yeah. which she's always told me. I know her name was uh, Sherilyn Marie, uh, and her last name. So she, I got, I got CMS, and we went. I couldn't wait to go show her. I'm 17 or something, and I go. I'm like, check it out. Like, I got your daughter's initials, and she goes, "That's not initials." And I was like, "No, I go, it is. It's in, it's in Chinese or whatever. It's CMS." And her mom goes, "What's CMS?" <laughs> and I go, uh, "Cheryl and Marie." And she goes, "Your middle name's not Marie." Uh-huh. This girl was so dumb. She didn't know her own middle name. She goes, <laughs> Man, she must have been pretty hot." Her dog. name was Cheryl Lynn. <laughs> And then her last name. So I have, and I just kept, I've worked around it yeah. with all my tattoos because I'm like, leave it. Yeah, I I'd, like the story because I'd get a just, better tattooist to go over it and make it even brighter. Because <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's, it was wrong anyway, yeah. and it was never that to begin with. That is a badass tattoo. <laughs> yeah. That's like, I got some good tattoos, but that one, I haven't even seen it, but I am a huge fan. Oh, this that is, kicks ass. This is me and Luis J. Gomez friendship uh, quiz. Who knows who better? Whoever got 10 wrong first loses. I won. I only got nine <laughs> things wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's so adorable. What I try to get rid of is ones that I got that I was like self sad guy shit. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I used to have, uh, I remember I just got the word zero oh, on my arm right there. But and not was, the skateboard company? No. And then I'm a zero. So then I tried, yes. And Jay, then I tried, how, how close you're was not this? not a zero. How okay? close was this to the Smashing Pumpkins? Era too where, far away. Okay, and then I had so I thought it'd be funny on the other one. I got in an, Ala- in an Alaska, uh, cl- an Alaskan club. A lesbian did this in the lobby of the club, and it said "hero" because then it was the Vanilla Ice quote. Oh uh, no! Forget the zero. Oh, get with the hero. Dude. And then you got to. I got rid of both of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they both come around to. Yeah, yeah. you crazy. got tattoos. <sighs> He's got your mom tattooed on his arm. I got the nice. heart with the scroll through it where it's supposed to say your girlfriend's name. Yeah. And instead it says your mom. Nice. It's a frat tat right I thought, there, baby. I you met my mom. Yeah, it's everybody's mom. That's, <laughs> That's sort the of the beauty point. of the thing. Oh. Yeah. I'm planning to cover it up. I'm waiting until my children go, hold on a second. Because whenever they've asked about it, I go, yeah, I love your mom. And I'm waiting for the day that they go, hold on, that doesn't add up at all. And then I'll put their names on it. I don't know if I've ever asked you this. Have you ever watched, for nostalgic sake... China's pornography before she passed away. Nah, Never and I even have out. I even have a joke about her because I tell people that I did okay. hook up with her, and and I'm not lying. This part of the joke is I never saw the porn where everyone says she's got a big clit. She's got a sweet dick though. I'll tell you that. That's that's <laughs> part of my joke. But I but I still to this day haven't typed in. Because I, I really legitimately, when I hooked up with her, because I, I did everything with her, mm-hmm. and people were like, dude, did you see the... Because that's where I got the joke from, because everyone's like, did you see her big thing? And I was like, no, I didn't. But I think she... I think if you... I think she did have a big one, but yeah, I didn't... It wasn't I was pretty crazy. busy, man. Wasn't it... I mean, I assume that... Uh, I just kept freaking out on her lats. That was the thing that was throwing me off. What, you, you liked it? No. She was still pretty jacked. I thought I would like, I've always wanted to have sex with somebody that I thought could defeat me. Like, that's like a thing that I've always had. I like that too. I like like muscle chicks. Yeah, me too. And then at one point, I was on top of her and she flipped me. Jesus. And I was on the back, on the bottom all of a sudden. Did you go, hee? I was like, like, oh, wow. Like, this is really happening, you know? But that was kind of as, as far as her power came, kicked in. But then when she was on top of me, I did hold her. On the lat area, and I know that I've, you know, I know I've done gay stuff, but I'm not that into it. 
That I kind of threw it. me a little bit. How do you like a muscle girl? I like a. Yeah. Like, I would like to sleep. Well, no, not anymore. Like how 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 muscly? Like the girls in the magazines? Yeah, I. As jacked as they come. I yeah. like a jacked chick. Yeah. He fucks with me about it all the time. But there's but, something about just a shredded, a powerful woman. Just yeah. the shredded abs and the fucking yeah. arms. Yeah. And yeah. But uh, I find Ch- I think China won. Well, that's what I was asking. Was she super jacked when you were? Because she was yeah. like, at one point she got, so, she was always big, but she yeah. got softer a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I mean, I remember she got out of the bed in the morning and the lights were on because her assistant came in that I didn't know was in the house the whole time. And she gave her a phone, said, you're on with the morning news. And she got up and immediately started talking to the news, like, hell yeah, brother, slam people. And I, and I, and I, and I remember, and I remember going, to <laughs> 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 and I remember going, because, you know, at nighttime, oh, no, that, there was a, she straddled me when I was driving down the freeway and she had a big frilly scarf on. And when she straddled me, I couldn't see. I couldn't see the road. I was like, you got to get off me. Like, we're going to crash. I cannot see the road. And I remember thinking, dang, those shoulders are gigantic. <laughs> but when she got out of the bed in the morning, I, I remember I was like, okay, she's still jacked. The yeah, sunlight she, hit her and she was like a statue. You just, a little little bit. Fucking- just saw the silhouette of the <laughs> like, lid. Like this one? Yeah. She was like the shoulder I, monster from the Bugs Bunny cartoon. I feel bad because I. <laughs> oh, I really liked her. Like I kind of felt bad because at first yeah, we, were, we were, you know, like I was really talking to her and enjoying her company, and I was like, yeah, like I'm new, newly divorced, but I could date this person. And then uh, later on, I was like, oh man, she drinks a lot, you know. And then afterwards, I was like, it's not for me. And I remember feeling a bit guilty because I'm not a, uh, like I'm not a. I'm a whore, but like like a, a uncontrollable whore. Like I've got it controlled now because I'm sober, but I never wanted to sleep with anybody and make them think that that we're gonna date just to sleep with them. Right. But when it after it all f- happened and finished, I knew that I couldn't date her the next day, and I felt bad about uh, yeah, not yeah. wanting to hang out with her because she really was a sweet person. Yeah, like I felt like she was a sweet person and I also felt like her friends when we went to dinner, that's when I made her leave. I was like, let's get out of here without these people. Everybody there didn't love her and I could tell. Like oh, she was, just hung around with a bunch of like hanger on They people. were all just like clinging, just like living off whatever money she had left. It was it was immediately sad. Yeah, she got on Stern a few times and it's pretty tragic. Like, yeah, especially because he just bashed her. Like everybody there just bashed her. And I'm like, you know, she's rolling with it, but she's rolling with it because she wants the attention. Yeah. And there's no other way to get it. So she's like, okay, so if you're going to impersonate a guy this whole time while I'm here, then then great. But it's better than nothing. Yeah. Like, and what, I, now that I'm older and I kind of understand like the the way that the mind works when you go through things like that. I'm like, man, I do feel bad about it. How'd she sure. die? Oh, I think she OD'd. She OD'd. Yeah. But she was a sweet person and a legend. You know, look, you made some mistakes yeah. in the end, but so would you if you got on drugs and alcohol. It's not her, it's the addiction, you know? So it's I, also the fall from grace with that. Yeah. When you're that big. I mean, she was in some big matches. Yeah, she was, and she kind of tried to stick up for herself and that's how she lost her job. She was like, oh, you know, I need more money or... You know, why don't you give me this and giving this guy that? And yeah, first woman like, to win the Royal Rumble. First yeah, female, it seemed like a lot of the, like her boyfriend at one point was Triple H and he kind of played her like people played her, you yeah. know, and she wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed. It doesn't that's not a crime. And, I, and but she paid for it, you know? Yeah. yeah, I think that happens sometimes. That's always been my theory with like Britney Spears. A lot of people like the process of making yourself amazing. A world class talent is fueled in part by like you're a very, very smart person. So you're equipped. It's somewhat to handle it, but some people just get that thrust upon them and they just, they don't have the tools. Well, it's also chasing that fame again. You know, you can't, and when you, you chase know, it, it fame. goes up and it comes down and it goes up and it comes down and sometimes it doesn't go as far up again, but you're trying to get back to where you were. Yeah. And I in know this that. business, you can't, That's you why. can't always do it. <laughs> I speak yeah. at school you know? sometimes and I say, Hey, sometimes you're headlining WrestleMania Sometimes you're getting butt fucked in a gang bang by the referee. Right. And you got to just find and try to live in that gray area. You got to live in that happiness in the gray area. Well said, Jay. <laughs> you should have told me that a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Our clips are pretty much the same size, too, so it all works out. Do you think that maybe it had changed size by the time you encountered it because she was no longer on steroids? Yeah. I, too, uh, yeah. I don't know the science behind it. I know that if you do a lot of tests, because I've, I've got some trans friends, girl, that are now guys, that I watch their 
yeah. thing get bigger. And then there's then I know some other people that have been doing it for decades, and their one is crazy. It turns into a penis. Well, there's I like a they'll show it to you. That's pretty great. Bailey dude. J is a good friend of mine, and she was doing hormones as a young trans girl. Yeah, and her penis wasn't as big, and then she stopped doing it, and her dick grew into what it, it got bigger. Yeah, it yeah. grew into what her theory is that it actually grew to what it would have been. Yeah. if she was, was just became a boy. Now yeah. she's got a big wiener that was bigger than when I first started jerking off to it. And, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, and then she says too that if she gets off, when she's on the hormones, she wants to be fucked. She wants to be a woman. Yeah. But if she gets, like, she was like, I went off hormones for like a year and I just become a fag. And I just blew Uber drivers, old Cuban guys, for like a year. <laughs> All I wanted was suck dick. And yeah. It was weird. So that, that stuff that you're putting in you definitely affects you yeah. physically. And, yeah. And I wonder mentally. if that happened with me with the, Weed in the kratom and the alcohol, because I can't get out anymore. You should do time lapse photography on your friend's growing clits, though. You should do it like week one, I week don't two. Hang out with, I don't <laughs> hang out with people like that anymore. No, uh, trans people in general, uh, uh, adult entertainers. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. What bad scene? If you're trying to be sober, it just um, bad like uh, positive people. I can't, I can't fix you. I'm fixing myself. So I can't bring you up right now. I need to get up. Yeah. And, uh, and if I try to help somebody who's really low right now, you might pull me back to you. And I know that sounds selfish, but mm. I got kids, man. Like I, I need to get back on top. And I mean, not like financially. Oh, that would be great too. But I want to be clear and full of love and positivity. And I've been so dark for so many, so many eras where I've just like – thought things i'm like that ain't fair dude you paid enough you don't need to think that about yourself like be your good person working hard like learn to love yourself and and, and helping somebody who's in a really dark spot it's like if you're sobriety sure but if it's that stuff like i can tell you like get out but i'm not gonna pull you out of there i'm not gonna get in there and pull you out you gotta come out and see me yeah you gotta you gotta do it you got to learn to love yourself. And you know, dude, like if yeah. you don't want it yourself, we'll be back after these I can't words. convince you. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> goes, love wow. yourself. That's good, man. We'll be back I, after I, this. I think that's fucking great, man. That you're actually putting yourself before all the other bullshit. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes. You seem happy, which is good. Yeah. I'm doing a lot better, to, man. You, that's for sure. You, have to, you think, if I get that. If I can get there, oh, I'll be happy. Yeah. If I can get this, then I can be a good dad. I've I can def- be a, yeah. a good husband, a good friend. I just got to get there. Yeah. But you, you, you're here. It's this is it. You yep. can be there, right? You can feel that feeling anytime you want to feel it. Yeah. yeah. I little things, man. Like I helped uh, Ian skateboard the other day. Like, and he's the kind of guy that when he gets excited, he's fun to be around, man. Oh, yeah. And when I got him skateboarding and doing stuff he thought he would never do, and I saw his face turn into a 12-year-old, I was, I told him, I was like, I've, I'm good friends with Tony Hawk. We skate all the time. That dude loves skateboarding more than anybody I've ever met in my whole life. You, what you just did now, what I just taught you to do on this mini ramp, you love skateboarding more than Tony Hawk, and you're more enjoyable to watch than Tony Hawk. Because it just oh, yeah. brought, like, I was laughing my ass off, dude, because he was so pumped. And he was really putting it on the line. Like, he, I was like, you do this wrong, you're going to be really sorry. <laughs> and he was like, you think I can do it? I'm like, I know you can do it. Just, you know, like, baby step it with me. And then, like, now you're ready to go. And he dropped in on this little mini ramp and went over the pom-pom thing and did a kick turn. And when he made the kick turn, he, like, came flying over at me like, ah! <laughs> like I'm his father or something. It was so he, cool. He just man. got hit by a bus in New York on a skateboard. So. <laughs> it was on a bike. No, sorry. Don't so try to put it on me. It was on a bicycle. You asshole. Uh, trying to make me feel bad. I Good love job. it. I love that you weren't getting David Tell on a skateboard, but he'll let you jump him while he smokes. <laughs> <laughs> Tony jumped him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a way better idea. That's great though. Yeah. That was Dude, so he was hooked like, me up. Uh, this is the the big jump that I got. He came on Hawk versus Wolf and was like, so you're a comedian? And I was like, eh, I'm trying. And he's like, when you do a show with me tonight? And I was like, you're shitting me, right? Yeah. And then I did that show. And he's like, man, you're really good. You want to do one tomorrow? Yeah. And then the next night I did three nights with Dave Attell. Hell yeah. And then I flew to Tacoma and did a show with TJ Miller. And I don't think I would have done anywhere near as good if I hadn't have been thrown into that with that kind of encouragement. 
Did you get to watch him like each night? Oh hell I mean, yeah! And then he brought me up he's the be- at, at the, the end of the he, show to fuck with the crowd. I don't even know. Yeah, I don't even know. Like he's like, "What's up with your tattoos? You look like a tattoo." And I was like, "Wait, what's going? Oh, oh, we're roasting each other." I'm like, <laughs> "Dude, I would have preferred a, a memo on that." Like we're, we're atta- I'm attacking David Tell. Like I don't feel positive about this at all. Oh, I could have told you. Yeah, he goes up there and he just points you. And then if you play his little flute thing while he's <laughs> while he's blazing me, if you if you whiff, he'll be like, "Good improv," and yeah. then just move up and be like, "Oh shit!" I came up. <laughs> With one, he was like, You just should have called me a fag. And I was like, That was probably shut up. Yeah, that was, that was my favorite thing on stage with him. He did with the recorder. He go, Because I I really set him up without knowing. And I go, Do you actually understand like the notes now of the recorder? Like, do you read the notes? And he was like, Yeah, yeah, watch. He goes, Who F? Who oh, yeah, yeah. A, <laughs> he, he, I heard that song. <laughs> That's the greatest thing about comics, though, is that we are, a com- we're like, we'll always bring somebody up yeah. who, who, we're there for each other all the time. I, you know, you see you another guy it. trying to do it. It's like, yeah, dude, let's dude, go. Dude, you guys have done that for me. Like, Jay, you've had, you were, you were the first shot that I ever got. Like, you oh, were the we first were time I ever did it where I got in the green room and I was like, okay, I'm never stopping this. Like, San that was, Diego? Yeah. Where, Diego. I, where, no, no, it was, it was. Oh, Ont- Ontario. Yeah, Ontario. Ontario. Where the crowd, I, I did the best I've ever done up to that point. And when I got in the green room, I was like, I'm high and I'm not on drugs. I'm done. I'm never getting out of this. And, and, then, the, and then the very next time I went out, I think it was the ha ha's. And it was just like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, and I'm like, okay, you're not where you thought you, you were. Know, I didn't even think about what I had. So I had to host the shows in Ontario. Uh, a buddy of mine who I, I think is great out here, but he's one of the, he's like an alternative comic to some degree. Uh, Mikey McKiernan, should you give him a shout out? Mikey McKiernan uh, is very funny, but he does this thing on stage where oh, he tells one yeah, liners yeah. and yeah. then he goes boo ha, <laughs> and Jason's nerve. You know, he's a new comic and he's nervous, and the crowd's like a good sized crowd. He's like, and he's watching this. And watching Jason's face, like, I'm going, like, isn't this the funniest? And Jason's like, I don't know. It's, like, freaking me out. Like, he's like, is this really happening on stage? It took me a while to catch that this guy is the, the, the most enjoyable part of this whole thing is Jay watching him go boom, ba, and people going, what, is he going to keep doing that? <laughs> and every time we do it, he's like, yeah, he did it again. And I'm like, what is wrong with Jay? And what is wrong with this guy? And they're like, you're up next. And I'm like, I don't want to. Should I go burn, burn as well? Like, yeah, let's watch this guy. He's like, what happened up there? Yeah. <laughs> I still follow him. He's a legend. Oh, yeah. Mikey, Mikey's great. He's a fun guy. Oh, I saw you at the store. Uh, oh, yeah. We did a show together. When you you were nervous, and yeah. I was like, "Me too, dude." I'm fine. You, you, you didn't sell it. Yeah, I, mean, I remember you were like, "Yeah, me too, dude." I, I, I was like, "You I did t- not care." I told you, dude. I was. Sh- I I sh- I'm nervous every time I go on stage. Okay, good. Every time I go up, and especially at the store too, because that's not yeah. my club, you know. Yeah. But even at the cellar, I'm fucking nervous. I get fucked up in my head, and yeah. we did a show together, and I got to go in some room and write things down. And <laughs> he's, a, you know, he's nonchalant, like he, yeah. he fifteen terrible. people and hanging out and smoking, and I'm in a room, you know, organizing my shit. Yeah, and, yeah. And I get fucked up all the time. When I walked in there and I saw you, it's almost like, "What's up, dude?" Yeah, I'm a little nervous. I'm like, "Fucking yeah, me too." I'm. It makes me feel good. Yeah, I need people you, like you around. I don't like this asshole who's, yeah. who's like. Anyway, I was out the other day. Doing, well, I'm up next. Yeah, all right. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. wait, were you, you what? You don't even. You don't even. You he just, doesn't. You were he talking doesn't. about some fart joke right before you went up. You don't what, care what do you guys, at all. What do you guys yeah. think is the line between... Because there's both kinds of comics, right? I, mean, I always remember David Letterman saying the reason why he effectively stopped doing stand-up is because he ne- the nerves never went away. He's like, my entire day sucks every I, day. I need it. Yeah. I need that little... Yeah. <sighs> and you don't, Jay, obviously. No, I, it listen, depends on the shows. Like I'm, doing, I'm not nervous tomorrow when I'm doing the comedy store. And it's my crowd. I'm not nervous for that. I'm doing the forum with Bert the next night. And like that, I'm definitely nervous about. Yeah. Okay. Because I don't know if I'll get his audience with my stuff. And then like... Good. I hope you shit feel, yourself. It, it feels the same way if you go out there and you go, all right, this is a little dirty for a Bert crowd out of the gates, yeah, but yeah, okay. Yeah. And if they kind of give like a, oh, you're like, well, this isn't going to get much. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like you yeah. can fake like, the energy you need to give to kind of get them back. But there yeah. is, right away in your head, you're like... 
you know it's like the the above water below water you know what i mean where it's like you're going everyone else has seen like oh you guys didn't like that maybe like this one but inside you're like oh god please is it almost done oh my god there's no way i've only done one and a half minutes <laughs> oh man that makes me feel way better though no, I like knowing that sure. you get nervous yeah, you, on certain you, you, shows. You, my that, problem is every time I watch the, you guys, the, I'm like, I go, I need a, a book of jokes. <laughs> Everyone else always going through their note cards, and I'm like, I don't have anything has, written down he ever. He has nothing written down. He's about to, I, I come off, he's about to go on. It's just like having a fucking regular conversation with Lewis. Yeah, man, Pantera's coming in. Jay, you're up. Okay, man, thanks. Yeah, Anyways, no, I'm right saying that. And it just walks out, kills, sits down, boom, bang, boom. I can't. I don't know how the fuck you do that, dude. No, it's. You, I don't know. I, the organization of it would make me like was what would drive me nuts a bit. Like, See, I, I'm more like, like thinking if I fuck. Oh, because then I, I feel like I give myself more like uh, it's less space to go. Like, oh, I flubbed that line, and it's like yeah, now I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm like stuck in this thing. Yeah. Whereas like I try to like not have that kind of like pressure on myself. I put so much pressure. <laughs> I'm like that's the least last pressure I need. You need and the to more put pressure. pressure yeah, but those pressure shows. It's like the Bert thing. Also, I'm doing. That's why I do every summer. I do this fully loaded tour with Bert. Yeah, when I go it out there, so I'm like, cool. it's fun. But I mean, like every show, you're like, all right, this isn't necessarily like a bulk my crowd at all. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like I'm gonna go out there and like I'm gonna have to win some of them. And it's gonna take an. I overthink that a lot. We used to the Opie and Anthony virus tour. Nightmare. It's looked like. <laughs> I mean, why, why was it bad? It was uh, the pressure. It was 12,000 people that uh, they did a tailgating for like six hours before. So by the time the oh, show, wow. and it went from not light to night. So it's like a three hour show. And you're going on mm -hmm. after Patrice, right. Billy, Va I mean, there's no, there's no weak spot on the show. Right. You know, when you know that you can see that, all right, I'm going up after that. I'm good. I bring yeah. up like Sag at Dom Yeah, it was, too. it was fucking nuts. And we, I used to. And you plus you get some guys screaming and yelling, and guys bombed on the show, yeah. bombing in front of that many people, yeah. and you're on the radio show. It's just it was like this fucking pressure. I remember yeah. Patrice. I used to have to follow Patrice. It's like such a dick. <laughs> the fuck, put this line. Know, up. Right? You what know? about Bill's? Bill had the the pop. Bill Burr's pop. Yeah, his first pop came from that. So they did that virus show tour, and there's grainy footage of it only. So funny because it was like still flip phones. Really. It's, from, it's from my phone. Is it really? Yeah. Is that really what it is? I it's it's, it's grainy footage yeah. of Bill, but the audio is great, and it's him in Philadelphia. Yeah. Going up there, the show had already been hours long. We were we were sitting. It was it was three. Wait, hours is this long. where he attacks the crowd? Well, this is what happens. Yes. That's that, his pop. That's his pop. But was he, the first there, pop. there's a three hour show. And they would do an intermission for some stupid reason. So people could get the more drunk. Stuff, yeah. uh, so he had to go up like after the intermission. Yeah. Which is like, and then people were already, Dom Irera bombed, Jimmy Schubert bombed. They're from Philly. Yeah, like, that's true. Both those town. guys are from Philly. That's their fucking town. That's how fucked up Philly is. The locals attack the and, local. And then Billy, I remember him backstage, and we all used to be like fucking, like bat, like fighters. Yeah, yeah. Says, I gotta go. Yeah. And then they're like Robert Kelly, poof, what's up, you fucking pieces of shit? Yeah. And then you, but he was backstage, like, Dad, I'm not fucking catering to these fucks. Fuck them. <laughs> He, I, I gotta give it to him. He's like, I'm doing my fucking set that I wanted to do. I'm not yeah. fucking doing, you know, jokes. I know that I'm, I got this new band where, and he went out and they turned on him. But Billy has a dossier on everybody, yeah. like in his head. Yeah. And he went out and fucking he did his time. He's like, I'm doing my bombing. He's like, I'm doing my whole fucking set. Fuck you. And then he just trashed Philly. Yeah. I mean, he was like, dude, you guys fucking worship a, a five foot Italian fighter that didn't exist. And you got <laughs> Joe Frazier. You're a piece of shit. Oh, God, ten, they go 10 more minutes and he you slammed the mic down. You, you have a statue of Rocky. Yeah. Uh, Joe Frazier's from here. You don't even have a poster of him. Yeah, about yeah, that's it. It's like crazy. I mean, he fucking that is laid brilliant. Through it. Yeah, he trashed it. But then the problem they said with the tour was the next, the next we were in Cleveland. And they boom on purpose. It was so to try to get him to do it to them. It was so oh, no. epic. It was such an epic moment. It went viral before viral. Yeah. And the next week we're we're in Cleveland and they just booed him. Just to recreate him, so trash us. Yeah, and he was like, "Fuck you." I remember we were sharing a dressing room, and I went back in. It was trashed. Oh like, wow, oh, lamps broken, and that makes me feel really good. Yeah, though. That would suck. That yeah, he, be... but he, that that thing that he, he did, is a legend. He dude. that that's what switched him. He's like, yeah. "Fuck, I'm doing fuck you." 
he stopped doing the tour. Yeah. And he's like, I'm just going to go do my thing, and I'm, I'm doing it my way. I'm not fucking, which I respected, because yeah. you're getting paid a lot of money. You're yeah. on this tour. Yeah. You, you're trying to fuck. He was like, I'm not fucking doing this anymore. And he huh. walked away from it. And he went and did his own thing and it's did his own tour. It's a risky thing, but it worked out, It huh? worked out, and that's why, oh, you know. Dude, yeah. Philly, though, is classic. It's I remember great. I had the joke about Michael Vick being in the dog fighting yeah. and how I, you know, I, I understand why people hate him, but he's a quarterback for the Eagles now. And, uh, you know, for my for our team and that, like, you know, I, I don't care. And I'll, I'll throw him a dog and let him tear it apart like a werewolf in the end zone when he wins for my team or whatever. <laughs> It was more or less the joke. Jesus and I was like, and I did it. It's a good joke. It's a great joke. It's a great joke. So I go. I feel bad laughing at it. So You're I'm fine. going. I did Mayhem Fest, the metal tour. Uh, they let me kind of host it. Uh, that was like the Corn Rob Zombie year. And then the next year, they hit me up like for the, they go, hey, you want to do the last two weeks of the tour? Like you can jump on in Philly with us. And whatever. And I talk about being nervous before a show. That's not a comedy audience. Either. Yeah. And they also don't know who I am. Yeah. So it looks like a roadie just grabbed a microphone and starts like making fun of people and telling, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. dick and ball jokes. So they were confused, uh, like, by the whole thing. And fucking, uh, when I went back on this second time to do it, we started in Philly. So I was like, okay, I'm nervous, but good. I go, I got this this joke about the Eagles and, and Michael Vicks, yeah. this is going to give me confidence because when I go out there I, I hit that joke, this is going to be the winner. <laughs> yeah. And they go, all right, you're going out. I'm going on before Motorhead. It's what? <laughs> and I go uh, I go out there and I'm, I'm like, yeah, you know, every guy's, uh, I'm from Philly, you know, I'm from Philadelphia. It's my first joke. Go, yeah, he goes, go birds, right? Go Eagles. And I'm like, yeah. I go, you know, uh, I go, I know Michael Vick, a lot of people are pissed off at him in the world and stuff, but, he, but he's, he's our quarterback. Right? I do the joke, and I go, I'll throw him a dog, let him tear it apart like a werewolf in the end zone. It's an amphitheater. And I'm telling you, I don't know if anyone laughed. It just sounded like deafening sounds to me. And a guy stood foot on his chair and the other foot on the back of the chair in front of him, and he just goes, no, no, no. <laughs> Dude, I crawled off that stage, and I literally... I had to be convinced by Lewis and Dave and Christine to. I was like, I'm just gonna drive back to New York with you guys because they came with me to bring me there. And they go, No, you got it. Like, come on, you're on the tour for it's like wow. two weeks. I was like, I don't think I want to go. Like, it's gonna yeah. be like that every day. That was horrible. Oh man, I'm sorry, but I feel just so much bit. better when I no. hear these. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, I bombed last week, dude. I took a hot one. <laughs> really? I was at. The, I mean, I was at the cellar. It's my show. <laughs> and I had the two guys going before me, these young bucks that worked for me. Yeah. Bom the first guy bombed. Yeah. So I was like, all right, whatever. The next guy goes up, fucking ate his dick. Oh. I'm like, I'll get him. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't. <laughs> Didn't. <laughs> I walk off shaking. There was a guy there, a friend of mine that came to see me. I go, hey, I got to go do a podcast. I just lied. I'm like, I got to go. And I, was, <laughs> I just left. And I was just. I was what? like, I feel sick laughing at it. I was trying to, I didn't want anybody to see. I was going back to my car that night and I had my hat and I pulled it down because I didn't want to bump oh, into somebody dude. from the show. This is recent. Dude, it was a, last Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I started doing, I started doing all, like I bought a bit out. I did like on my first album. I was like, maybe you'll like this one. And I, I and it's, it's really, I'm 53. I can't act out shit. I was like, doing some moves <laughs> and I started getting uh, and then just silence I was like yeah well you know things are alright that was fucking Those tough are funny things to watch the transition though from someone getting no laugh when they go exert themselves too oh, much it's the worst I remember a comic doing that like he had some he's dressed up for the show and like he was doing a joke about dancing with chicks or something and it's like yeah the dance moves these days are are crazy and he ends up on the floor and it's just dead silence while he's like jerking around laying face down the floor and then it's one of my favorite comedy memories just him getting up and going so that's my thing with yeah. gloves yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just the funny goes so that's my thing about drive throughs I did that. Uh, Steve Byrne you know Steve Byrne yeah. very funny guy we used to do this thing at the uh, Beecher's Madhouse at the Hard Rock mm, Cafe mm -hmm. back in the day it was like epic 2,500 2, people just sold out fucking rowdy and he had this thing that he would do to get them every week. There's only like three or four comics that could get this crowd. Yeah. 
And he, me and him are on the show. And I'm going up after him. And he goes out and he goes, what about, you guys have feeling good? Wow, what about this side? This side's a little better. Wah, wah. What about, th-? and it would get this place just fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And then he got too into it. And he was like, fucking rah. And he ran out into the crowd all the way to the back. Wah. But then they stopped because he's in the back of the room. And he had a, I remember him walking <laughs> through the crowd. <laughs> and just the crowd was looking at him. Cause he didn't have a mic, <laughs> like he's just, and it was dead silence. It felt like fifteen minutes, but he had to walk, and then he had to like throw himself back up on the yeah, stage yeah. and roll, oh. and then goes, "All right, guys," and he went into his. I was, I was hot. The greatest thing about comics dying, yeah, it's the funniest thing to I know, us, right? man. We, oh. well, I remember me and we, we used to, <laughs> we used to make each other bomb at the cellar. Like, how do you do that? Well, me, Rich Foss, Nikki Glazer was on stage at the VU one night. I mean, murdering. Yeah. You know, sucking jizz and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and fucking, <laughs> fucking, you know, killing. Yeah. Mostly women. We know Rich Foss had to go up after her. Oh, <laughs> you know okay. I mean? So me and Keith went on either side of the room. And as he's telling his jokes, we just went, oh. <laughs> oh no and it Dude, just took over the whole crowd so bad and he you didn't know we were doing it he just thought the crowd turned on oh. him. and he snaps he's like she was up here fucking guzzling jizz and you fucking <laughs> and we we're like oh oh the oh, funniest the, the seller was the the only bathroom at the comedy cellar is you, you have to walk through the yeah. room which is a very small room and just like whenever a comic would just walk through, it's just purposely like they, it, they're they're a spectacle walking through the room. Yeah, it's why it sort of sucks to go even have to piss there because when you walk, the comic's gonna be like, oh, you gotta, you know, it's you just everyone sees it. And just like when the comics were just like Patrice mm-hmm. or Bobby, and they just walk, and only you can see them. <laughs> We'd always but, go. I mean, the whole crowd can see their body, yeah. but only you see their face front and center, as close as I am to you. And they just walk by, and be like, Ugh. yeah. And when, <laughs> when you're in the middle of the joke, <laughs> we're just the shaking, their head, just just shaking their head no. <laughs> it's like, why? Because well, we because you want to make the person fall. Listen. Here's the thing: we were there every night. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. seven nights a week. Yeah. You were there if you weren't on the road. Yeah. Oh, that's and awesome. So, so it was like. It didn't matter because you were like, you're back. That yeah. was the third show tonight, and you're back tomorrow okay. for three yeah. more. So it's nothing matter. better. They, they weren't that. Uh, they weren't that sacred. Nothing better than you. You know, <laughs> we'd never watch each other if you were doing good. But when you were bombing, get downstairs. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> and you'd look out in the hallway, and all all of them, Patrice <laughs> Norton, be like, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing funnier. David, oh, fun, the funnest, the most fun person to watch bomb because it wasn't a bomb was David Tell because he would just get he would just turn uh-huh. it like he needs he's he never changes his personality to everything right. the room doesn't change just keep doing it yeah. and I just remember the line he said one time at the cellar like he was bombing hard and then he had one joke that got like a pretty good laugh and he goes thank you guys now imagine what that'll do and. When it's performed not in this basement full of broken toys. <laughs> <laughs> what a champion. Oh, man. That's a long show, right? I have to go? Yeah, yeah. we have to go. Thanks so much for doing the show. Thank you for having Thanks us. For having this is fucking brother. awesome, man. This is the best. Let's do it again. Yeah, nice to meet you guys, man. Where do we go to... Where's your website for tickets and all that stuff? BigJComedy.com and uh, punchup.live slash Robert Kelly. <laughs> you guys, dot com. I just realized who I'm talking to. You say that every show, right? Yep. Yeah, we do. Every yeah, episode. Yeah, we do it opposite yeah. for ourselves. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and uh, the bonfire, SXM. Yeah, don't don't watch that. Faction, <laughs> Faction, Faction, Faction Talk 103. Oh, shit. Oh, it sounds like a hell of a channel. Yeah, <laughs> where'd you get that, that name? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> don't die.